Good afternoon, Houston, and welcome to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever. Are you fearful that better health seems out of your reach, regardless of how hard you try or whatever you do? Are you afraid of suffering with heart disease or diabetes or perhaps lingering with stroke or cancer? Or do you avoid thinking about these things because you'll just try to make the best of it, whatever happens? Are you limited by joint pains or finding that you can't run from your headaches? Maybe you're hesitant to try something new because you're afraid that what you'll do is wrong, or maybe because you'd better be right or nothing will ever help. Regardless of what might be happening with your health problems, these next few minutes could be the answer to your prayers. Unless, of course, you're convinced that your doctors have done everything possible, or if you've already decided to have surgery but you're waiting till you worsen further. But if you hold out any hope at all, then you should know that we see desperate people every day. People skeptical about whether anything we can do can make a difference in their lives. And sure enough, many of them are pleasantly surprised. Maybe you could be one of them. After all, the only thing you have to lose is your discomfort, your fear, your worry, maybe even your anger that no one has really listened to you or that no one has been able to help you. We'll be talking about what you can do to get out of your pain and get on with your life. I've practiced for 25 years, never believing that you're suffering from a deficiency of one or more drugs or that an operation is probably the best answer. Whatever ails you, God built your system to repair itself and to restore more normal function. And that, in a nutshell, is the whole buzz on the topic of alternative or holistic medicine that you've been hearing about these past few years. Now, drugs and surgery can be helpful, but true natural healing depends on three factors. First, find what's blocking you from feeling better and remove it. And second, find what trace factors you might be missing but you need for repair and provide them. And third, find what switches need to be turned on and turn them on. We'll share practical pointers to help you improve with the most common problems seen in doctors' offices. Practical preventive medicine updates to help reduce your risk factors for the most serious diseases that claim our comfort and then our lives. And practical ways to reduce your risks and improve your results with drugs and surgery that you might need. As I've said for years, when life is your choice, failure is not an option. So learn more today on how you can succeed. And if what we offer doesn't apply to you right now, then share this life-saving information with family and friends who do need to know. Now, the book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 1, verse 9, that there is no new thing under the sun. So let's see what we might learn from those who've walked the path ahead of us. Famous astronomer and inventor Galileo Galilei said, I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. And in that regard, let me share with you that the Pythagorean theorem, that's a mathematical principle on triangles, is 24 words, and the Lord's Prayer is 66 words. Archimedes' principle, another physics principle, is 67 words. The Ten Commandments are 179 words. The Gettysburg Address, 286 words. The Declaration of Independence, 1,300 words. The United States government regulations on the sale of cabbage, 26,911 words. Perhaps we have finally foregone sense, reason, and intellect, as Galileo warned us. And that thought really provokes something for today. Mark from Houston called to ask me to share some exciting news for those suffering with deteriorating vision. So, We'll turn our attention today to an unfortunately all-too-common problem as we get older, the symptom of macular degeneration. And we're pleased and privileged to have with me today one of today's leading area ophthalmologists, Houston born and bred, but transplanted to Huntsville for a more country pace of life, but still on the cutting edge of treatments for macular degeneration, Dr. Frank McGee, who is with me in studio today. And we're going to talk this afternoon about something called AMD or sometimes ARMD, In other words, blindness that happens to us as we get older. Dr. McGee, thank you so much for joining me today, Frank. It's my pleasure to be here. So tell us a little bit. What is this macular degeneration thing? You know, big terms in medicine are so damn confusing, and and always doctors are throwing these around. What does it mean? You know, unfortunately, uh, it's been around quite a long time, and also it's very common as we get older. So therefore, you really want to think, well, what's the relationship between that and age? 
And if you think about it and look at it and diagnose it, you know that it's a disease of decreased circulation. Well, that could be called a lot of things. But it sure for, could. You know. <laughs> but uh, there are many other, other types of diseases that can relate to it, but still we've got a decreased circulatory problem. And as, as you may know, many doctors will say to their patients who examine, uh, who are ophthalmologists, they'll say that there's nothing to be done because can you reverse a decreased circulatory problem? Well, there are things you can do. Well, no, wait a minute. You know, we can do operations like bypass for hearts and, and clean out arteries in the neck and so on. Doesn't that help for macular degeneration? Well, I think it does. Also, which you have to take a, a more holistic approach, I think, in order to know exactly why the circulation is decreased. And, and we are talking about the tiniest blood vessels in the eyes, right? And they, But they extend out from the largest. Okay. But, so you've got to know the, the nutritional Evaluate, have to have a nutritional evaluation of the patient. That's the first thing. So in other words, they're not just carrying their eyes in to be looked at. They're bringing in their problem. Well, you know, we're, we're trained to be ophthalmologists and just to, just to examine the eyes. But if the more you get into preventive medicine, the more you realize it's the whole body's connected. <laughs> All together. Yeah. So you do a nutritional evaluation with a patient who says, geez, my vision is kind of decreasing. Or they may not even notice it, right? Well, they may not, uh, because usually it, it occurs in one eye before the other. It's a bilateral problem eventually. But with the, with the use of their one eye that's good, they may not know that the other one's going bad. Okay. So the, the purpose of uh, the main thing that I like to recommend is that people come to the doctor, an eye doctor over the age of 65, at least once a year. Unless, unless they've already been diagnosed or unless their vision's starting to get worse. What, what if somebody already has, let's say, heart problems and they're in their 40s? Is, is it an idea that they start getting baseline exams with well, an ophthalmologist? That's, a, that's an excellent idea, John. And, you know, one of the things they can do is take a what we call an Amsler grid home with them uh -huh. and actually plot that out if they think that they're a high-risk patient. Now, what is an Amsler grid? Well, it's a crisscross, sort of like a tic-tac-toe uh, piece of paper that uh -huh. has a central dot. Uh -huh. And what you do is you look straight at that little dot, and then, as off in the periphery, you want to see whether the lines are wavy or bent. Uh -huh. And if they are, that could mean that you might have earlier macular generation. Okay, so so the pattern, you actually see the pattern. Yeah. It's, it's not little, someone looking in your a, eyes. It's a little piece of paper uh -huh. that can be duplicated or Xerox taken home and filled out probably once a week or once a month, depending on how bad the patient might start to be looking at. And then they fill it out, date it, bring it back to the doctor. He might want them to come back in two months and see what four or five of them look like. So, Frank, what you're saying is yeah. that preventive medicine is something you can do at home to help the doctor diagnose what's Absolutely. going on with you yes. at the very earliest stage. Yeah. Well, actually, the, fur the very first thing that would in even make me think to give them an Amsler grit would be to look into the eye and look at the macula and see if there's a reflex coming back, a light reflex, right. which right. is normal. Which is what we're all trained to do in medical school. But if you don't see that light reflex and if it's there, if it's not there consistently on another visit, to me, that means a vitamin A deficiency. Okay. Therefore, you can start at that point to treat the patient. Now, here we're talking about circulation. All of a sudden, you pop in vitamin A. Tie the two together for us. Well, vitamin A, of course, is tied into the eye. Everyone knows that because uh -huh. carrots are good for exactly. it. Exactly. But the whole point is, is that do they does the vitamin A they use, is it a quality vitamin A? Has it been, uh, has it been uh, looked at to see that it has no carcinogens or mercury? Right. And, uh, so is it purified or is it polluted? Right. And then also, uh, how is their digestive system? Can they absorb it? Right. And then they need to convert it, in other words, for to another compound underneath vitamin A called retinal, and that is the key, that is the part of the vitamin A that goes to the eye. And they need a good liver to convert it, and they need zinc to, to carry it. Gotcha. So they need minerals. They need good minerals, plus good, good uh, intestinal absorption. You know, Frank, what I've enjoyed over the years of, of being in nutritional medicine is watching how the AMA has gone from you don't need any extra vitamins mm -hmm. to you might need some. And now, actually, it's a good idea to have some. And actually, you can help prevent cancer and other diseases with some. But, you know, they still have taken a very simplistic look and not, not at all the pieces that interconnect here. And, w and when you look at all these pieces, they really matter, don't they? Well, yes. The, uh, the optimal level... <clears throat> The optimal level of vitamins uh, is totally different than what we rec what was the RDA back in the 1940s. And according to each individual, you want to push the envelope on as much vitamins as they can take without hurting the patient. Exactly. Without hurting the patient, yeah. that's key. We're going to take a short break and come back with one of your patients 
And then we'll go further to talk with you, Frank. The time is about 10 past the hour, and you're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Your extended health forecast is brought to you now by Life Celebrating Health in Humble near Bush Intercontinental Airport. And our crystal ball shows clear to partly cloudy with the winds of change blowing. Are you acting more like an ostrich burying your head in the sand because you don't feel able to deal with your health problems? Then your tail feathers will be getting wet when partly cloudy skies change to rain. Perhaps you're clucking around kind of happy that a new medication has you feeling better, but not realizing that those fancy patches and band-aids might not be the best for you. If you're not changing anything and simply hoping for the best because you've been feeling pretty good or maybe you're afraid or unsure, then cloudy to very stormy skies are on your horizon. Or maybe you're just ready to make changes to regain and maintain better health, then sunny skies are coming your way. At Life Celebrating Health, you can depend on us as partners in your health care, and we'll design personalized programs to help keep your days sunny. And we'll show you how to spend less and get more. Call for your free telephone consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. Ask to receive our free e-newsletter. Just share with us your email address. And ask your questions. Send your questions to us through our internet website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Because unlike the weather, you do have choices for better health. And this afternoon, we're joined with uh, one of Dr. McGee's patients, Lois Gilliam, who has actually benefited from some of the treatments we're going to be talking about later this hour for macular degeneration or AMD, ARMD, whatever your doctor has happened to call it. It's age-related degeneration in the blood vessels in your eyes. Lois, how are you this afternoon? Just fine, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to join us. You know, Dr. McGee has been explaining to us about how this procedure happens, how we get sick with problems in our eyes, and uh, you've had some treatments with him. Yes, I have, just recently. And, of course, they were painful and awful and horrible, right? (laughs) Not exactly. Oh, everybody says, you know, that the medical problems are, are pretty bad, but, uh, you know, the, the treatments are uh, are not at all uh, terribly concerning or anything. It's called MCS, right? If that's what you call it. That's what we call it. Okay, we're going to go into those details, but this improves your circulation, doesn't it? True, absolutely. And what do you notice when, when uh, Dr. McGee does these treatments for you? Well, actually, uh, why I saw Dr. McGee was my... My guideline normally has been when I could no longer read the numbers in the telephone book, it was time to get for my <laughs> prescriptions changed. Yes. So before I did the usual thing, a friend of mine, Mark Metzger, asked that I make an appointment to see Dr. McGee. Right. Which I did. And, um, I, you know, I could tell you my story. Please do. Um, after the examination, he found that my vision was t- about 20-50. And um, in discussing, you know, what I could do to probably keep my um, vision from deteriorating, he suggested a microcurrent device that he has. And, of course, you know, I jumped at the idea to do anything that would help my vision. Exactly. Now, you know, everybody now we're talking about laser surgery and all this stuff, but this is not at all. It's microcurrent stimulation, or MCS is what he calls it. Mm-hmm. And and how does this work for you? Oh, I was, I couldn't believe I had use the device only twice a day for two weeks. Uh-huh. And then I was very anxious to go back to the doctor to have a re-examination to see if what I thought was happening uh-huh. was really true. I had picked up the telephone directory. I could actually read the numbers after two weeks. So I wanted to see if it was real or just, you know, um, imaginary. Hopeful imagination. Now, we're talking about putting this device on for what, uh, five minutes twice a day? Five minutes twice a day. Okay, uh, and it's totally real, easy, painless. real easy to put on, right? Oh, very simple, yes. Okay. So anyway, after going back for my checkup, I was astonished to find that the uh, vision had changed to 2040. Whoa. Which, you know, I was elated about. So um, anyway, I can... I am continuing to use the device religiously and uh, up the time to three times a, a day, uh-huh. um, you know, when time permits. Now, this is also along with nutritional support and, and things like that, right? And it, the the big picture. Right. When we discussed the overall, uh, he recommended that I do a personal uh, mineral uh, analysis. 
and through the blood work, et cetera, I found that I was so deficient in certain minerals um, that you, we just don't get out of the foods we eat now. So anyway, they customized minerals for me as uh-huh. well as the amino acids, which I've received today, and I will be taking those um, and then visiting with him again shortly. So basically what it is is this is a program that as you're getting better, you're getting more and more pieces of the the puzzle to put you finally back to better health, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. This is called personalized medicine, you know. Right, yeah. and I'm truly thrilled to finally find someone that seems to know how to put the whole picture together for me. Well, that is kind of nice, because normally we think of ophthalmologists as just doing surgery, and, you know, you're going to get another laser operation when you go in and uh, and so on, but that's not really the case, is it? No, not at all. And uh, when you talk about uh, the the... Uh, gradual vision benefits. You actually noticed those very quickly, didn't you? Yes, after two weeks, um, and especially at night. I was reluctant to drive at night, and I um, found that my night vision has been sharper, I guess, or um, the images seem clearer. Uh, So I was just, you know, thrilled. I, I feel very comfortable going out and driving, even after this very short period of time using the device. Now, I want you to notice something, because what you're talking about isn't fixing your eyes. It's it's aiding your life. True. <laughs> and, and that <laughs> has true. a big impact, because, you know, people who gradually lose their vision, as you know, gradually cut down their activities, and they become less and less independent mm-hmm. and much more dependent. And you're reversing that process right now. I, I, and especially the very fact that I don't have to increase the prescriptions uh, he said, wait, and let's see how this works before we went into, you know, a new prescription. And if this continues as I, I feel it will, I won't have to get the thick lenses, you know, and continue <laughs> on as I get older. So, little, little vanity here, too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's always good. As we get older, vanity is good. That's right. <laughs> You know, when we talk about um, changes like this, circulation changes, we're talking about a part of the brain because the eye is just an extension of the brain that picks up light waves. And that processing on the brain, that circulation that's improving right there, is absolutely fundamental for the way you look at life, literally. I see. And, uh, you know, when we talk about improving the minerals, we're not just improving the balance with the vitamins and minerals that your eye Dr. McGee is giving you things that are balancing for the rest of your body as well. Mm-hmm. It's all tied together. Right. And I'm sure that uh, as I continue on with this, I will feel, you know, 100%. And uh, that's what I'm really excited about. Oh, yeah. And that optimism always counts there, too. Right. If you wanted someone, you know, because people will hear this and they'll go, oh, yeah, I don't know. But my doctor didn't mention that. And I, don't, I don't know if that's for me. If you wanted someone to have a thumbnail thing, to a take-home lesson, what would you want them to hear from you about this with your experience with Dr. McGee? Well, that I feel that it works. Um, <laughs> and go with what works, huh? Absolutely. You know, uh, I've tried numerous things. You know, the the vision um, enhancements the where you exercise your eyes. Uh-huh. This uh, didn't seem to work for me. And um, being the fact that we live such busy lives and I don't have time to do the things I should... I found that five minutes was just a breeze. And if anyone is having deteriorating vision, my one thing would be try it. You know, what what do you have to lose? You have only something to gain. And what it is is straightforward, simple, easy, painless, right. and it's producing results. That's correct. Outstanding. Lois, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon to share your experience. And, and uh, I, I wish you all the best in your next visit with Dr. McGee, okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye. The time right now is about 19 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME with the best medical updates ever. Let's pause briefly for this important message from one of our sponsors, Magnetico. Would you like to sleep soundly and feel better, have extra energy? If so, you need the Magnetico Sleep Pad. Blind studies have found the Magnetico Sleep Pad helps people who suffer from pain, fibromyalgia, angina, fatigue, and pain from diabetic neuropathy. Sleep pad owners report relief from arthritis, pain, and back problems, migraines, high blood pressure, and other disorders. And here's the good news. Magnetico offers you a six-month satisfaction guarantee. So start feeling good again. Call this toll-free number now, 1-866-465-8892. That's 1-866-465-8892. You know, I'm going to have to ask the folks at Magnetico what experience they might have 
with helping folks with macular degeneration. That magnet might uh, be helpful there, too. All right, let's talk about it. The fourth week in May, Pickle Week. This includes the traditional start of summer, the Memorial Day weekend. Month of May is also the better sleep month, so why don't you call for a CD copy of our recent very popular show on sleep apnea, better sleep month. And our blast from the past, the Burma Shave Road Signs. Those of you who are my age remember those wonderful, entertaining red roadside signs. Drinking drivers, nothing worse. They put the quart before the hearse. Burma Shave, our blast from the past. And we're joined this afternoon by Dr. Frank McGee, ophthalmologist from Huntsville, who is introducing to us this excellent concept of MCS, which is microcurrent stimulation and excellent technique to integrate with the other holistic parts of treating macular degeneration, age-related eye vision changes. So, Frank, tell us more. Well, <clears throat> macrocurrent can do more than just treat macular degeneration. It can also treat diseases where there's impaired circulation, such as diabetes. So, therefore, when you have other problems, and even hypertension, when it gets to a certain point, that's also another disease that you see decrease circulation in sometimes as it, goes, as it advances. <laughs> yeah, we see a lot of problems with diabetics losing their circulation to various uh, body organs. The... Uh, Amazing, over the country, there have been about, oh, there's been, uh, people have been treated with this problem, with this particular therapy for maybe five years. And a good percentage of them, those that at least start off with either 2080 or better vision, which is not bad, will see a marked improvement within, just like Lois said, within two weeks. And that, that's a repeated and, and that's, story. That's phenomenal. You do understand that. Well, first of all, ophthalmology is a strange field because, you know, when you go into the, the family doctor, you say, well, do you feel better? And you go, well, you know, maybe I do. But with ophthalmology, you guys can measure it. That's, yeah, that's true. You're precise. So you know whether the improvement is there. And, again, this, since macular generation is a disease that's very slow in onset, you have the opportunity of making an early diagnosis long before the patient starts to complain. That way you can put them on their Amsler grid or at least tell them what to do initially and then build up with their treatment as they get worse if they do get worse. So, and, and that's when treatment is simpler, oh, yes. easier, more effective, less expensive, and less the, involved. The results are better. And, my, and Lois is a good example of that because she has some pigmentary dispersion. The macula is okay, but it doesn't look just perfect. And here she's gotten a result in two weeks. So she's showing age-related changes. There's We're just wearing out as we get older. Very early. Right. Yeah. And she's improving by reversing those, which means that she's on, kind of on the edge. She's, she could get worse, but now she's getting better because she's doing it right. So we just wait and see and then repeat the exam periodically and then maybe go ahead and start her, with, like we just said, on both a mineral program and an amino acid program. So, so you're fine-tuning her as she's coming back. Yeah. You're changing the treatment as her... Condition and then, improves. And then just do a few things in the beginning and see what happens. Let's talk about people who are worse than that, because Lois is one of the early cases. But people come in with pretty severe macular degeneration, I mean, almost blind. Well, there's a lot of people that have been told that, uh, well, there's nothing to do, so therefore they don't know what to do. <laughs> right. Watch and when them. they get that type of mindset, unfortunately, from other ophthalmologists, they simply don't think there's anything except maybe what they read in a, in a newspaper or a catalog. But that's a tragedy, isn't it? Well, of course, yeah, it is. That's, that's preventable blindness. It can be slowed down and also reversed early. Okay, now when I'll, you talk about slowed down, you're talking about many more years that they could still be seeing and living independently. Sure, that's the point. And when you talk about reverse, you're actually talking about improving where they are, even though they've been told there's nothing else to do. And there's two ways to uh, con uh, two ways to actually uh, uh, decide and and how to know that they have improved. One of them is very simple because they can read one line better on the chart. <laughs> right. The other way is by contrast sensitivity, okay. which can show them that they are seeing better as far as the black on white uh, type of letters, perhaps when they're driving, or green, on, or green on white. And a lot of them maybe won't show an immediate improvement in their vision in the doctor's office, but they say they can drive easier. So just exactly what Lois was saying is, hey, I'm seeing myself better driving at night, and I'm, I'm more comfortable, which means safer. Yeah. So what we do in the office is we also measure the contrast sensitivity to uh -huh. show them that they are improving or how much they need to improve more. Excellent. And we're yeah. talking about a very simple little instrument here, this MCS machine, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's approved, FDA approved for uh -huh. pain. 
And, of course, by that, it can be used in other type of off-label exactly. applications. Exactly. We're talking about a little box, right? Cigarette yeah. uh, pack-sized box. It's about four inches by three. Uh-huh. And it has a switch uh, inside that you can either go to a micro or a millicurrent. Okay. And micro is what we use. And you put these little pads on your eyes that are called electrodes. And uh-huh. over, the pa- over the eyes themselves, you put a little cotton uh, uh, type of pad that uh-huh. you moisten. So, and then you put a little Velcro strap around the electrodes. And, 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 this, and is, even this is though, painless. Yeah, and even though you can't see, once you've adapted to how the controls work, you uh-huh. can easily do it without having to see it. <laughs> okay. And then there's a four-frequency uh, uh, program that is over in five minutes. And, and it's built inside from, the machine. Yes, and it goes from one frequency to the next, and it lets you know when one's over by a beep. So on the fifth beep, you've gone through all four frequencies, and you're ready to take off the pad. So it's fail-safe. Anybody could do it. Oh, yeah. And now there's only, uh, there is, an, is a certain number of people that aren't able to use this, and those people would be ones that have had seizures or are on seizure medication. Okay, and that makes sense because yeah. you're stimulating with electricity here. But here's another thing that initially I was told that you can't use this on people who have pacemakers, like demand pacemakers. Now, what I've done, I had one person who was so excited to want to use this. I said, well, let's do this. Let's take it right to your cardiologist. Show him the frequencies and put it on for him if he wants. I got a call back and said, I didn't have to do that. He said, it's okay. I called him on the phone. So there may be a difference in pacemakers according to the frequencies. Sure. But, but this, this is just preventive medicine. You're preventing sure. any problems with but your treatment. But you take treatment, it and right? ask, your, ask your cardiologist before you purchase it and go from there. <clears throat> well, that's kind of neat. I like mm-hmm. that. Let's talk about now, the, the diagnosing about someone. They come in, they, they do the macular degeneration. We've documented that. Your assessment is to look at mineral deficiencies, vitamin status, uh, amino acids they might need in order to repair on the inside, which is all the stuff we've been talking about week after week, you sit down with a patient and figure out whether or not they're at higher risk. Well, after you perform an eye exam and you know that they have a problem, Uh and it's probably if it's gotten worse from the previous exam, you can know that too. The first thing you want to do if they're interested in pursuing a form of either prevention in the future or at least hoping to control this is to diagnose and see by blood work if there's any nutritional deficiencies. And that's a different way of looking at blood work, Mm -hmm. to see whether there's any nutritional deficiencies around. And if there are, what you want to do is to give them nutritional supplements to Mm -hmm. make their blood work optimal. Mm -hmm. And and you and I weren't trained on this in medical school. We've gotten all this afterwards. It's, it's been a trial and error, and it's been, it's been OJT. <laughs> oh, in the job training. And, and you've done some pretty fancy work. You're the president of the uh, uh, Nutrition Association. The, the organization is called IAACN, International American Association of Clinical Nutrition, uh-huh. formed in 1990. And it's a marvelous organization because it teaches people like us that don't have this training right. how to evaluate a patient nutritionally. And that doesn't sound like it should be a hard job, but if you first your mindset has to accept it, second you have to listen to PhDs and people that have been working in the field right. who really know more than we do. Right. And hopefully someday we might have this accepted in medical schools in the curriculum. Well, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. So uh, if, if laser surgery keeps going on in its popular way, then that's going yeah, to be the field yeah. in ophthalmology, and yeah. uh, you and I will be continuing on the sidelines. Yeah, I, I thought we ought to try and mention also about who are the most common people that might Please. have this. And they, those are people that smoke. And the reason for that's because of the cadmium, which is a toxic mineral, as you know, uh-huh. that's impregnated in the cigarette paper so that their cigarette paper burns slowly, and uh-huh. that cadmium is, def, is very detrimental to the eye. Uh-huh. Hormonal changes in postmenopausal females, that, of course, is a circulatory problem in its own. Right. And then it seems to be more common in lightly pigmented eyes, uh, blue eyes versus brown. And so uh, we have to look at those people a little more specifically. Uh Uh-huh. But as we see an aging population exist with the baby boomers, we're going to see an increase in this problem if they live longer. That's right. And we're going to have more people for sure. So there's two problems there just with uh-huh. age alone. Uh-huh. And then, as I recall, if you get macular degeneration in one eye, you're at higher risk. That second eye is on the way, isn't it's it? It's called a bilateral disease, but it right. means you don't re- really have to have it together at the same time. But it is bilateral. But it will come on at a higher at, risk. At, certain, at a certain time later. Now, everybody thinks of blindness. That's something that happens to somebody else. You're right. But it really is going to happen to people in the advancing age groups, isn't it? It it will, and this is the most common way that you'll see that they'll have their their problems because this is the most common form of blindness over 50 years of age. 
And there's a high percentage of people from their 70s to their 80s and then 80s to their 90s. Hopefully we'll live that long. But as you, as you approach an, another 10 years of, of living, there's a much higher risk in that age range for sure. macular generation. We're wearing out at that point. Frank, we'll be right back to talk with more details. It's now about 30 minutes past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Sometimes when our attention is focused on our health problems, we forget that laughter is the best medicine. And our joke for today, nurse says, Doctor, there's a man in the waiting room with a glass eye named Brown. Doctor says, what does he call his other eye? Oh, that was a bad one for today, wasn't it? Oh, goodness, if you have a doctor joke that's suitable to share with us, please let us know. Memorial Day is just around the corner, Monday, May 31st. At 3 p.m. on Memorial Day is the National Moment of Remembrance to pause and reflect upon the true meaning of the day beyond boats and beer and baseball, and especially while our troops are in harm's way in so many areas around the world. So do pause and do reflect. Let's get straight to the question, what are you waiting for? Sick and tired of feeling sick and tired? Angry at not feeling better? Threatened with pain or limitations or fearful about the future? Can you trust that you'll find the answers, the ones that you need right now? You'd better take this responsibility seriously. You've got to find the answers somehow, and you'd better be right because your survival might be in the balance. So listen to what I have to offer. Over the past two dozen years, I've developed and improved integrative treatment programs to help many people suffering with a great variety of frustrating illnesses, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, heart disease even after surgery, and especially congestive heart failure, even macular degeneration, which we treated with a technique that I want to go over with Dr. McGee called chelation therapy, and shortness of breath, restless sleep or insomnia, poor circulation and leg pains, hypoglycemia and diabetes, poor memory, even Alzheimer's and other dementias, migraines and other headaches, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, ulcerative colitis and other gut problems, frustrating skin conditions, disabling neck and back pains, sports injuries and arthritis, prostatitis, chronic urinary infections, chronic sinus and lung infections, hormones and thyroid and sexual performance, PMS, menopause, even menopause. And the list goes on and on and on because, see, health deals with basic body processes, not just squashing particular symptoms. You could feel better than you ever expected. I've lectured on these topics for over 20 years. I've written books and medical papers to share how to make healing happen. The leading authors and newsletter editors in preventive medicine have been personal friends of mine for years. And in my 25 years of practice, I found that very few people know that simple, effective, and cost-conscious solutions are available to help with their problems, starting now. And few people realize that several of the problems for which they're seeing different specialists are often related to the same basic cause. So correcting what's causing one problem might improve several other problems that frustrate, worry, or anger you. Make your healthcare investment pay even bigger dividends in your future. Get the details on our exclusive and unique cashable voucher program that can return to you cash dollars for your future expenses. We're here to save your health and save your wallet as well. And that's what this show is all about, and that's what we're all about at Life Celebrating Health and Humble. Call for a free consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. You're listening to Feeling Better, Naturally, with Dr. John Trowbridge. Invite your family and friends to tune in and join us here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, Saturday afternoons from 1 till 2. And this afternoon, we're joined with, by Dr. Frank McGee from Huntsville, ophthalmologist, national president of the International and American Association of Clinical Nutritionists, and what he's really sharing is the information about macular degeneration, the age-related decrease in vision, which even leads to blindness. And, of course, that's what we're here to prevent, isn't it? Oh, exactly right. And there can be things done if they're done early enough. Of course, I think most of us go to an ophthalmologist or an eye care doctor in order to get an eye exam periodically, but do they really take the time to look at the back of the eye and see whether the macular reflex is present or and, not? And, and that's important because what we normally think of is, is the front part, the lens part with the glasses. And that's easier to see because it's in the front part of the eye. Exactly. And so we're worried about cataracts and, and the refraction, the glasses and such. But really examining the retina is the part where you actually see in the macula is actually the fine and it's vision. only a very small area in the whole entire retina, and you know, and it can be looked at though, 
properly if you take the time to do so. Right. And, and study see it, whether right. or not there's anything there. And, and sometimes what's there is a very subtle change. Well, the most earliest change is that is that re- reflex, light reflex. Uh-huh. The and if loss you don't that, see uh-huh. that, well, then you have an early, early, early problem. But that's the easiest type to fix. That's the time to fix it. Yeah. So if you were talking with people who, let's say that they've been seeing doctors for years, and they've just, I, I like to use the uh, idea about what we do for strokes, and that is we water them and watch them. And so they've been watered and watched with their macular degeneration, and they have now progressively worsened. And they listening to this show, and they say, well, maybe, I wonder if Dr. McGee could help me. What would you tell them to do? The very first thing is that uh, please call my office, and I'll be happy to talk to you first about your problem. And, and that phone number is? And uh, my area code phone is 936-291-3351. All right. And then perhaps in the conversation, uh, I, I understand or I'll hear someone say they've been to several eye doctors, and I'll ask them, have you ever been to a retinal specialist to see for sure that that's what the problem is? Exactly. Good start. And also we'll ask for pictures, photographs, and uh-huh. probably those records. And then I'll look them over and talk to the patient again as soon as we receive them to let them know exactly what they're dealing with. And hopefully if they've not had laser, they're, it's a, certainly an easier problem to, t- to try to tackle. However, with laser, it's unfortunate, but that uh, can is done routinely. And that interrupts the circulation in its own. Exactly, because you burn and, and you, scarred the area. And you scar the area where right. the vessels don't don't circulate as much as they did before. Now, if that has happened closer to the macula, that decreases some of the effectiveness of treatment, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. A- absolutely. And so hopefully we get those patients before they before had Before that done. time, that's right. Now, yeah. someone's going to say, well, my vision is 20 over 200. There's really nothing you can do. But there is, isn't there? Yes. I would take any person and certainly do what I can in the routine form of what I just said earlier regarding a nutritional evaluation as well as start them on minerals that are customized for their own need and then look at the other forms of blood work, which include whether or not they have higher or a higher chance of, of clotting which right. is called hyperviscosity right. syndrome. Sluggish they, blood. Or yes, yeah. and if they have that, we put them on the proper supplements to uh-huh. reduce that. Uh-huh. And then we have to we have to talk about oxygen at some point because that's a very important part of what they may need. Gee, you mean why your heart is pumping your blood around is to share oxygen and nutrition to your cells? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's so funny is we learn about this in health class, you know, in high school. Yeah. And, yeah. and promptly forget that there's ever any doctoring that needs to be done, but it's essential, isn't it? Absolutely. And you, as you know, we have a very fine person in Houston who's really an authority on how to deal with oxygen therapy. Me? Well, <laughs> and, and you too, because you've done it for so long. But uh, without mentioning any names, uh, we have a very fine person who's a technical advisor in how who's to... been marvelous for both of us, yeah, that's right. who can understand oxygen saturation. <laughs> that's right. And uh, with that in mind, we can also improve the circulation because we have to, we have to do everything we can with this disease. Well, and what's nice about it is when you talk about with this disease, when, when you start doing with the vitamins, the minerals, the amino acids, the oxygen and such, the disease you're treating is really blood vessels all over the body. Sure. That's an, as one person put it, you're treating the eyes, but the, but the whole body goes along for the ride. Goes along for the ride. You can't just make it stick in the eyes. Yeah. That's right. I call that the spider web theory of medicine, uh-huh. that if you tug on one part of the web, the whole web jiggles. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I didn't uh, thought of that. It's, it, it's so true because when, when you uh, outlined for me some of the things that we wanted to talk about this evening. I mean, you're, you're looking at the whole ball of wax. You have to, and, as and, you know. And that's what we started out. I love this. In medical school, we, in the first year, we start out seeing the big picture, and then we increasingly and slice it down exactly, and just pay attention to little and spots. And the emphasis is on, is on specialization, which right. takes you away from the, the whole body picture. Right. And yet we ought to be specialists in the whole body, huh? Well, we're going back to that. We are. Yeah. It's true. And there are other doctors, I think, who are catching on that that is the way to help other people. Oh, gosh, yes. Now, let's say someone says, okay, maybe it's worth going out to see Dr. McGee, but, you know, they tell me it's not going to hurt. It really isn't going to hurt. No, it's not going to hurt. And uh, I can give them so much information on the telephone regarding, after seeing their records, what they have and the chances of them improving. Uh And that's mainly what I'm able to do. Then after I do all of that, we decide on whether or not to go forward and draw blood that's specific for these other types of therapies I mentioned, minerals and amino acids if they're necessary, and decide really what we have to do that's the minimum amount and whether we can coast or have to go quick. Right. 
Now, if someone's vision is changing quickly, obviously they ought to see you sooner and plan on a more aggressive treatment. Or program. if they've already been changing up till the time they call me. Yeah, that would be important. And uh, there are some other things that I thought we'd bring in besides uh-huh. the nutritional aspect of, optim- of uh, treating this disease. And that would also include, as we've already mentioned, about minerals, amino acids, and oxygen, and hyperviscosity syndrome. But I met an interesting doctor a year and a half ago who lives in Phoenix, who is a standard allopathic doctor and has that type of license like you and I, but also has another license. He's a homeopath. Right. And that means he's, he's trained and gone through school again. And Dr. Conrad is just an exceptional individual because being that he's an ophthalmologist, he's able to take the entire picture and decide what needs to be done on both sides of the coin regarding what they need as far as their traditional therapy and turns around and he can decide homeopathically if he can be of help to them. And in regard to that, I said, and I sat in on several of his interviews with, with patients, both with microgeneration and otherwise, And he listens to the person trying to see what he can do to help them cope with what they have wrong with them. And, of course, that refers to to macular generation, too, because many of these people are saddened and very depressed. He also uh, has gone back further in there. He also goes back further in the interview to see when they started developing macular generation and losing their vision, was there anything else in their life that seemed to promote that? And I like that approach. It's a, it's a real total picture, I think. And uh, aside from him, who I, and he also will talk to people on the, on the telephone. So it's, you don't have to run out to Phoenix. You don't have to run out. Frank, hold that thought. We're going to come right back with you. It's now about 41 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. We sometimes forget that spiritual centering is an important part of healing, getting better, and staying healthier. Today's verse is from Proverbs 15, verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Remember that. Let's think of that all the time when we deal with our family and friends. And we're here with Dr. Frank McGee talking about the big picture, (laughs) no pun intended, Mm -hmm. in taking care of people with vision problems. And you wanted to add a a more personal note on that. Well, I just wanted, I also wanted to include another person that I've met in the last two years that I thought was just exceptional, who is a lady who I consider to be an ocular therapist and lives in Las Vegas. She is also available on telephone for people that want to hear her story. And this lady had no real degree at all, but, but developed macular generation and another disease called retinitis pigmentosa, Ooh. which is even worse. Right, exactly. And she immediately started to learn and seek out things that she could do for herself. Make a long story short, she is offering her services and has lectured all throughout the world in when she's been called upon in how she treats this alternatively. And Grace can do things such as talk to a person, develop a color therapy program, an acupressure and eye exercise program, and she's just marvelous. She's so upbeat on the phone and yet uh, has this problem herself. So I felt like that anyone who was interested in knowing about how another person could cope with this problem and deal with it, they could pick up and call Grace. And I'd have to give them their number. I don't have it offhand. But they could call your office. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, I think the important thing is, is the personalization that you're talking about because people get real sensitive to the idea about going blind. This obviously limits their life. Exactly. And, and they place so much faith in... The doctoring they get, and if we just do water and watch them and do laser surgery, that might not be anywhere sufficient to reverse any of the things we're talking about with nutritional deficiency and toxic metals and mineral deficiencies and so on. Well, it just seems to me like if I were told I had this problem and knew there was no conventional way of, of treating it, I, ha- I would absolutely go out and try to find someone who had done something with it and then go from there. Right. Look for something that works, yeah. as Lois said. Now, you know, sometimes when, when people hear things like, well, there's someone on the phone who will talk about color therapy and so on, they go, oh, gosh, I don't know if this sounds like real medicine. But you graduated from Tulane, mm-hmm. and you've had a lifelong practice of ophthalmology, real live eye doctor. Yeah, okay. routinely. And uh, you started practicing the additional aspects, the complementary aspects to your training because of the need to make better results, right? Well, exactly. And also I felt like that... Uh that macular generation had been ignored for so long. And oh, yes. yet I'd been told, like uh, you already had, to, had been told too, is that there's nothing to be done, but you can tell your patients 
that they won't go blind. Well, that's not all true. 85% may not. Right. But then again, they go blind enough to not be able to see well yeah. enough. That does make a difference. The uh, Grace is also will fly in and if someone wants her to and give a home program. Oh, excellent. Okay. So she's not only available by phone, but she'll come to your place of work. So you work. can help coordinate a, a yeah. program with other people who can yeah. help add into the program as well. It makes it better for the whole disease. Statistics. How much? I have done about 40 patients, treated about 40 patients, and in that, in that situation, I've gotten about 25% that have shown either improvement by, one of the, by either contrast sensitivity or by visual improvement. My very first patient improved two lines. On oh, the chart. excellent. And well, I had to awesome. check it three or more times to be sure I knew that that was right, and it was. And, of course, we're all thinking about glasses, but you're actually talking about the real reading vision. The, I'm the talking one about see. with their glasses, with at the, the, on the e-chart, after you treated them, and seeing that their their vision's actually their better. Their vision is that, that much better. Yeah. Oh, that's phenomenal. Those are major changes. Oh, uh, they really are. That's yeah. excellent. That's excellent. We'll be right back to talk further with you. It's now about 46 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. For your better health, let's pause briefly for this announcement regarding the Heimlich Institute. I would like to share with you that you should not let someone you love die needlessly. I'll give you an example. 1998... In different suburbs in Cincinnati, on the same day, two children, a 9-month-old and a 13-month-old, fell into buckets of water used for house cleaning. Their mothers pulled the unconscious children from the water and called 911, and each mother performed CPR, coached by the 911 operators. CPR, of course, is mouth-to-mouth breathing and chest compressions, and in both cases, the paramedics arrived and continued CPR as they carried the comatose toddlers into ambulances to Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. And five days later... Both children, still in coma, died. Now, the problem is, is that, you know, drowning victims don't have to die. This summer, millions of people will go to the beach, the water park, or boating, or will be toddlers wandering around the house or in the bathtub. Thousands will die needlessly because one half of drowning victims, that's about 40 percent, treated with CPR will die, according to scientific studies from the University of Washington and the Surf Life-Saving Association of Australia and the University of Toronto studies. But there's a growing number of lifeguards, over 200,000 in the United States, who are being trained to use the Heimlich maneuver to save drowning victims. One of them was a university student on duty in the summer of 1997 as chief lifeguard of Surf Cincinnati, a water park. Looked down into the wave pool, saw two lifeless children on the bottom. Nathaniel jumped into the water, retrieved the boys, and performed the Heimlich maneuver on both of them. Water gushed from the children's mouths, and both children, seven- and nine-year-old brothers, recovered fully. I could not have saved them without the Heimlich maneuver, Nathaniel told an international medical conference at Ohio State University Medical Center. Now, for five years, from 95 to 2000, Ellison Associates, a lifeguard training organization, kept careful scientific records of rescues from 32,000 lifeguards in water parks and public pools. Thanks to the use of the Heimlich Maneuver, the drowning death rate for unconscious, non-breathing drowning victims plummeted to just 3%. And these are phenomenal statistics. I want to refer you my friend Hank Heimlich. Personally taught me the Heimlich Maneuver I personally used to save the life of my younger daughter. Very important as the well, summer season comes and we start talking about pools and such that we know to do the Heimlich Maneuver right away. If you want information www.heimlichinstitute, H-E-I-M-L-I-C-H, institute.org. That phone number, 513-559-2391. 513-559-2391, important to save a life. Today's celebrity birthday is John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th United States president, born 1917. Comedian Bob Hope, born 1903. Patriot Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. Born in 1736. Entertainer Gladys Knight was born on the 28th in 1944, along with author Jan Fleming in 1908. Bond. James Bond. On the 31st, actor Clint Eastwood, born in 1930. Go ahead. Make my day. And football star Joe Namath, born in 1943. Gosh, did he look good in stockings. 
And as we're back here with Dr. Frank McGee talking about age-related macular degeneration or how people go blind as they get older, you know, we hear so much about doing the LASIK surgery and such, but those really are not blindness cases, are they? No, they're not. Um, not at all. All they are are refractive cases where if they didn't have LASIK, they'd have to wear glasses or contacts. Exactly. And we've gotten in a lazy situation in our life to where we will opt for something just to not have a have the reason to put those glasses exactly. on. Exactly. And then we talk about cataracts. That is sort of a blindness situation as the cataract well, gets worse and worse. Yes. You've got to you've got to be careful in those patients because you need to give them UV light coating in their glasses. And then tr- nutrition, again, will play a big part in what they do. One of the reasons why you get cataracts is because of nutritional deficiencies, low oxygen levels, and so on. Yes. And also in, regarding cataracts, if you are out there and wondering about that, there's it's so simple to ask your ophthalmologist what he would do. And if he feels like there's nothing, listen to what I'm about to say. You would need to take an excessive amount, or let's say a not excessive, but a tolerant amount of vitamin C and see how you do. Because the, we found that vitamin C can aid in visual acuity from a cataract and not have it get worse. Some people do better than others. So you can actually slow down the progress of a cataract. And especially if it's early. Just like with macular generation. Just like with everything else in life, it's easier to prevent if it's early. And now, the, other, the other thing, John, about cataracts is that I think that people need to take uh, reduced L-glutathione, and that's something you might not know about, but a health food store would. And if you took the proper amounts, which are early in the morning before you have breakfast so that they absorb faster, right? that would be excellent, too, to help you not have worse cataracts. So we're not talking rocket science. We're talking plain nutritional science that's been well-researched in the universities, well understood. Yes, and uh, the American uh, Clinical Journal of Nutrition is one place you can look at all of this information. And of course, people aren't going to go there. They're going to depend on you and me and that's to okay. have that background, it's which is fun. fine. It's fun to talk about it. That's right. It is fun to talk, and we are specialists in that regard. So if you have um, cataracts or glaucoma or other eye diseases, are you at higher risk for being looked at for macular degeneration? I don't think they're all related uh, because there are specific people that will have each of those other diseases. Uh-huh. And I think we just look at uh, macular degeneration as an aging phenomenon. So we just got to be careful and look at those people early enough and start treatment. So as you're aging, of course, we're all getting older by the day, and it certainly beats the alternative. <laughs> but as you get to what age do you think that it's time for your first baseline exam when you're getting older? Most of the time, over 50, I have patients come in every other year. And then at the late 50s and 60s, I start doing them every year just because of what we've said tonight, looking for that macular reflex that might start to fade. And and that would be a reason for the Amsler? That would be the first thing that I would do is to – uh, give them the Amsler grid and then uh-huh. also suggest a good nutritional program now, and let it go at that. Now, when you recommend this to patients, do they look at you kind of funny or? Uh... A lot of, uh, some of them do. There's <laughs> no doubt. And they have said, well, I've been to another ophthalmologist previous. And, and he, he didn't said, say a thing, did he? There wasn't anything he said right, he could do. Right. So I usher them into a new era of thinking, hopefully. And that's really our job, is that we're bringing them into a new thought pattern, a new paradigm. Yeah, yeah that's right. And this paradigm is really based on science. It is, uh, because the articles are there. The nutritional research has been done. And it all goes back to the fact, John, we've been taught nutrition in medical school to the point where we understand that as right, well. Right, right. Uh, I remember back uh, in my training, which was just shortly after yours, I got four hours of nutrition in my entire four years. And that was the most that was offered in any medical school in the entire country. Well, you did have more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we have to make it up on OJT and uh, take yeah. our weekends for going to seminars. But it opens up a whole new world it in does, how to treat it. people. And and the whole new world it opens up is their lives. Isn't uh, it? It, it certainly delays the onset of a lot of serious problems. That's it's, uh, and like you said earlier, if you treat the eyes properly, you're going to treat the whole body. It That's all right. goes together. It goes together. Now, yeah. this this MCS that we started talking about earlier, the, the microcurrent. microcurrent Stimulator. stimulation. Uh-huh. This is a, a little box that is prescribed by you with a specific program added together with the nutritional, added together with, we talked about a little bit about chelation therapy, getting the toxic metals, toxic metals out, out. And, and improving the circulation overall. And the benefit is seen first in the eyes, isn't it? Well, it can be because that's where you see the small capillaries in work. Right. Or, and arterios. And, so, and you don't have any skin lying over them. You can look no, directly at them. At them and see things that you... Well, in the old days, we used to see diagnosed cholesterol, high cholesterol. Because of the changes. The that's eye. right. That's Before right. we really depended upon blood work. 
Well, isn't that the truth? That was the and old so days. So that's that's by gone now. We have better techniques, but still, that show we can see the smallest changes that began in the human body by looking in the eye. And and you know that's what I was taught in my senior year in medical school. I had a wonderful professor of ophthalmology who had just shown us how you can look at systemic diseases through the eye, and 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 that indeed was one of the things that intrigued me about what you're doing. Yeah. Well, it opened up a whole new world for me. I, I didn't know what I was going to become, but when I sat down and looked into the eye and saw that beautiful orange retina with all those blood vessels, oh, I said, gosh, this is just wonderful. It's God's work of art, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Frank, give us your phone number again. This is Dr. Frank McGee in Huntsville. Your phone number is? Area code 936-291-3351. Now, if a zillion people call, it'll take you a little bit of time to get back to all of them, right? It, it could, but okay. we have we have two people who are, who are answering the telephone, so Excellent. it can be done. So please do consider calling because, you know, the idea of, of uh, doing everything that could be done is, is the only reasonable idea, isn't it? Yes, yes, oh, yes, I agree. And also, in certain people who are advanced, they need to start everything at one time. That's right. And they may not be overwhelmed by that, but still, that's the uh, that's what we're here for. And not delay, not delay. Yeah. Frank McGee, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon, and, and uh, we definitely hope that people get more and more progress with it's their science. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed talking to you, thank and you. hopefully we can reach other people. Absolutely. Yeah. So what is the take-home message from today's featured guest? Well, simply this, macular degeneration destroys not just sight, but lives as well. And not just those who suffer with it, but also also those who depend on them for transportation and household needs and for independent living, but also those whom they depend on, the sufferers depend on those family and friends who have to step forward to help them with transportation and household needs and assistance with living. And it deprives loved ones of enjoyment of their company as those who suffer withdraw more and more from their lives. So what we have now is an opportunity to understand help is available. At Life Celebrating Health, we've talked about this kind of treatment program for over 20 years with chelation therapy and nutrition. We've documented this in our books, uh, chelation therapy in 1985, the rumble and numble in 1997, living well past 50 in 1998. And now we have a new dimension to this program as Dr. Frank McGee has told us about the FDA-approved treatment program with microcurrent stimulation that can be used now with the eyes because it can help them as well. So there is hope that help is really available now. It is not something that's in the Star Wars future. It's available today. Bill from Spring called to ask me to explain how untreatable arthritis, such as rheumatoid, can actually be helped without cortisone. So next time... We'll share some special features with you on how to help pains and degenerative changes that look like they'll never go away. Today's show is dedicated to my colleagues, physicians and ones of all kinds of training, dentists, chiropractors and podiatrists, even research professors who, like me and like Dr. Mickey, are quietly pushing the boundaries of knowledge so that each day we can help people a little better to feel a lot better. Our production engineer today is Mark Fisher, our production assistants, Catherine Hill and Kathy Guyon and Rhonda Bird. Thank you for joining me today. Have you learned practical pointers to help you regain and maintain better health, perhaps to look out for your future just a little bit better, maybe to help you guide your family or friends toward new solutions for their problems? Audio tape and CD copies of the show are available for your personal reference and to share with family and friends. Simply call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for details. Now, what health problems are bringing you down, limiting your comfort, or threatening your future? Share your questions by email, info, I-N-F-O, at healthchoicesnow.com, or by fax, 281-540-4329, or by mail. Just call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for our address, or call to talk with one of our treatment assistants and let us know what special information we might send to you. Receive our free e-newsletter simply by sharing your email address with us and Enjoy the free downloads available on our website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Feel free to come by to see what's so special and visit with patients who are feeling better right now. They are anxious to share their successes with you in person. We're next to the Northeast Medical Center Hospital near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for directions or a map because we'd love to show you where better health happens. Remember, if your money, your time, your effort, your comfort, your vision, or even your life is at stake, get the very best answers and the very best treatment you can find. 
Rely on experts who can make sense out of your problems, who have the experience to produce results for you. When life is your choice, failure is not an option. Our message is one of hope for a healthier future, and we aim to produce these results for you. Invite your family and friends to join me next week, Saturday afternoon from 1 till 2 on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, exclusively on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Have a great day and a wonderful week.